Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the uh, to the new seminar from Instituto Astrofisica de Andalucía. Yeah, we can start. Uh, sorry, can start recording now. We yeah. need to mute. Here. Yeah. Uh, today we will have uh, the uh, the seminar, the talk by Dr. Milena Bovic. She will talk about astronomy for attaining sustainable development goals in Africa. Uh, Dr. Miljana Bovic is an assistant professor of the Ethiopian Space Science and Technology Institute, an associate researcher at the Instituto de Astrofisica de Andalusia here uh, in Granada, in Spain, and an honorary lecturer at Maravara University of Science and Technology in Uganda. She obtained her PhD in astrophysics, in astrophysics sorry, in 2010 from the Instituto Astrofisica de Canarias in Spain. Her main research interests, interests are galaxy formation and evolution, in particular nuclear activities in galaxies, star formation, morphological classification of galaxies, and galaxy clusters. In addition, for more than 10 years, she has worked on development in astronomy science education in different parts of Africa, in particular, Ethiopia, Rwanda, Uganda, Tanzania, South Africa, Kenya, Ghana, and Zambia, through different projects and initiatives related to research collaborations, institutional development, student supervision, trainings, lecturing, regulation, development, women in science, and outreach. In 2018, she received the inaugural Nature Research Hour for inspiring science dedicated to young women for their uh, scientific achievement and contribution to society. In May 2018, she was invited by the Science Fund of the Republic of Serbia to be one of the 16 selected science ambassadors. Congratulations. And in June 2018, she received a recognition from, from the uh, ESSTI for her contribution and work and in March 2020, recognition from the Ethiopian Space Science Society for her involvement in education and outreach. So thank you, Miriana, for this uh, talk, for accepting this talk. Welcome again here to, uh, to Granada in, in this format. And uh, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, René. And good morning, everybody. Good afternoon as well. I think there are also people connecting from different um, time zones. Uh, it's really my pleasure to be here uh, uh, with all of you uh, uh, in this virtual mode uh, at uh, IAA. Uh, the last time that I gave uh, the seminar at IAA was just before I moved to Ethiopia. So that's now more than five years ago. So I'm really excited to, to be here uh, uh, with all of you. So, so the talk uh, today is uh, not so much uh, related with uh, research uh, work, but uh, uh, very much important for the science uh, uh, development uh, worldwide uh, uh, as well. So, um, Starting uh, from now, when uh, uh, when I speak about uh, the development uh, in Africa, I will actually um, uh, I will be referring to uh, these uh, seventeen sustainable development goals that we have now. That is the UN agenda signed by the majority of the country countries that we have in the world, and um, uh, basically. Uh, uh, in order to, to really reach the sustainable development goals, uh, uh, I believe that it's very, very important that we really think about the long-term measures for the benefit of our society and how we can actually change the scope of what is the international cooperation, what is the international uh, um, uh, what are the international collaborations as well and when we come to the point of africa that is uh, uh, the the part of uh, today's talk uh, i think that uh, recent uh, european union african strategy for science and innovation that, that came out last year is really a positive uh, uh, sign that in europe we can see now a bit this change of uh, how europe and the african continent can actually uh, cooperate 
uh, and that this international collaboration shall really include much more science, education, technology development, and think uh, in this long-term uh, aspect. So uh, in order to combat poverty in the long uh, term, uh, those fields that I put here are really fundamental, uh, starting from uh, starting with education, that we all know that it's a key, key uh, tool uh, in our society for, for benefiting our societies and combating poverty. Without education, we cannot speak about science. Without science, we cannot speak about technological development. And then without all of these three, we cannot really speak about innovation. And we know how much all of them are really important for both social, economical, um, environmental developments uh, uh, of the countries. But the fundamental beside education, the fundamental, fundamental point is to empower 50% of our population and to really bring the same opportunities for everybody, for all minorities, and then independently on the gender. So empowering women and girls is extremely important. And basically, we will not be able to reach sustainable development goals uh, if this very uh, last point that I mentioned is not um, uh, really there present all the time. So when we come now to astronomy and space science, uh, uh, these fields really shown to be important uh, tools for development. And I will just remind you some of the uh, aspects uh, that are really strong sides of astronomy in comparison with other uh, sciences. So first is that astronomy is one of the most multidisciplinary sciences. I'm sure that all of you saw this picture previously in one context or another from the IU. And it's just to remind you that basically astronomy is related with all fundamental sciences, but also um, uh, different uh, uh, fields related with technology development, like computer sciences, engineering, material sciences, but then also with the humanities uh, and social sciences, like anthropology, ethnology, religions, and so on. So it means that through astronomy, we can actually contribute to the development of all of those uh, fields. Another aspect uh, that, again, we know very well is the power of uh, uh, the strength of astronomy uh, uh, to really uh, uh, inspire uh, young people and general community uh, uh, for education and for science by having these really inspiring questions that we all share uh, independently of what our profile is, such as uh, where do we all come from, what is the origin of life, uh, how the universe is, what are stars, galaxies, and so on, what will be the fate of the Earth or the solar system. And uh, 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 so uh, when we come to uh, really the point of how we can inspire in, uh, in an efficient way uh, uh, different communities, including those com communities that are uh, facing many difficulties, challenges, like for example, street children, uh, astronomy really shown to be a very, very important uh, tool. And then we know that every time that we have the um, development of the next generation telescopes, uh, astronomy is basically one of the leading sciences that is contributing to the technological developments and innovation through the um, uh, uh, development of ground-based and space-based uh, missions. And more and more, we are also hearing about using astronomy for the peace and using astronomy for developments. Why? Because we have uh, all these uh, big uh, collaborations that are uh, that uh, many of them last for decades, like the SK, that uh, is an ex a great example. And then uh, it really uh, brings the strong, it makes the connections between the countries uh, to be much, much uh, stronger. And uh, uh, with this slide, I would like to remind you just the connection, how the, the astronomy contributed to the digital revolution in which we are currently. Um, and we saw the importance of the digital revolution during the COVID. So just to remind you the idea behind Wi-Fi that now we can't imagine our life without Wi-Fi, uh, the idea actually came from astronomy and uh, the observations of the, the black holes. And then computing communication, GPS imaging, that all of these are fundamental parts of the digital revolution. Again, astronomy contributed a lot through the, uh, uh, the contribution to the development of the grid computing, the satellite communications, but also the atomic clocks uh, by observing far away distant sources and the CCD uh, cameras that we know that nowadays uh, um, uh, basically every single uh, mobile phone has a small CCD camera and uh, taking images, taking videos and sending that it's an important part of the digital revolution and communication and sending the information. However, we know that uh, these instruments are really fundamental in astronomy and all the development of the CCDs uh, is, is related with uh, our field. And 
then uh, through the uh, large data sets that we have in astronomy, millions and millions of uh, stars and galaxies, big catalogs, uh, and then development of all different tools for managing big uh, data. Through astronomy, we really contributed to the development of big data and data, big data science um, that nowadays is basically implemented in every aspect of our life. And with the future missions like uh, SKA, uh, we can really expect uh, uh, the, uh, the big data and the new technologies to be even more uh, strengthened through astronomy. And this is just to remind you that with SKA, we are expecting, uh, expecting about 100,000 times uh, faster data flow than what we currently have in the world. You know? So this will bring a, bring a huge revolution in all what the data are, how to manage the data, how to store the data, process the data, and so on. So when we come to the African continent, uh, another reminder is that Africa really has a huge potential for astronomy development. On one side, uh, 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 taking into account the uh, large uh, number of young population that, uh, that the continent has, uh, many inspired and uh, inspired people, young people with a lot of capacity, a lot of energy, and with so much uh, motivation to really uh, change the, the the uh, future of the African continent uh, through the, the education science and the technology. And then when we come to the uh, observational astronomy, um, you can see here the, the world uh, map of the light pollution. And uh, we can see that in African continent, many of the countries still preserve the, the night skies and it's still one of the natural resources. So if we just remind uh, ourselves how much um, uh, uh, Spain with Canary Islands or US with Hawaii or South Africa or uh, Chile, that is one of really great examples, uh, managed by using the natural uh, resource, the dark sky as a natural resource to really benefit and to um, to improve their social and economical development through astronomy, then uh, why not more countries besides South Africa can do that uh, in the future? So uh, uh, we could say that it's really time for Africa. And I would really just like to uh, remind uh, all of you, because uh, still we are receiving very, very often a question uh, why there is astronomy in Africa or space uh, science in Africa, taking into account many difficulties that are there, or what uh, one uh, astrophysicist is doing in, in Ethiopia. No? Um, so it's just to uh, really have in mind that investing in astronomy, investing in science, including astronomy, such as any other uh, field of science, is really not a question of can we do it or not? It's not a question of luxury. It's a fundamental need because we know that without science, we cannot speak about long-term social economical development. And we cannot speak about uh, 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 fighting and uh, fighting against the poverty and eliminating poverty. So if we really want to achieve the sustainable development goal, uh, goal one all together on the world uh, world uh, uh, level that we don't want to have uh, uh, really uh, poverty, extreme poverty that we are facing nowadays and such a big differences between the countries. Um, uh, we can really not think that doing science independently if it's astronomy or any other, it's a question of luxury. So it's really a fundamental uh, need. And uh, um, when we come to now the continental initiatives, more and more countries uh, are really having the vision that astronomy, space science are important. Here are a few examples uh, coming from the African Union as a joint uh, uh, effort. And in 2015, in the post-development uh, uh, agenda, in order to uh, achieve sustainable development goals, um, African Union recognized the, important, the importance of science, technology, innovation, but then in particular, the importance of space and geospatial technologies for achieving uh, uh, SDGs. And thanks to that, uh, uh, there was, uh, now we have the African Space Agency that is in the process of development. Um, it will be based in Egypt and the first African space strategy. And recently, the African Union started several surveys uh, regarding astronomy and then space science in Africa in order to see to get a better picture about uh, the, the current uh, status. And with this picture that I'm sure many of you already uh, saw it, 
uh, that we published in 2018 in, um, in the paper uh, where we summarized the, the status of astronomy space science in Africa, you can see that many countries really are already involved in the infrastructure development. So this is just related with infrastructure development. If you put here also uh, the programs that are like MSc, PhD programs now in astronomy, space science, uh, institutional development, then actually this map is uh, uh, filled even more. However, we still have about half of the African continent that uh, 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 doesn't really have still established um, uh, programs on a more professional level in astronomy and, uh, and astrophysics. Also, one of the signs that, uh, that astronomy is really becoming uh, very important on the continent is the re-establishment of the African Astronomical Society in 2019 that became very, very uh, vibrant uh, uh, society, uh, very uh, a society that now we already have more than 400 members across the continent, many young people that are there. And here you can see some of the committees, including Science Committee and then AFNA, that I will mention a bit uh, later in, uh, in more details. So now the, that this was up to here a bit just the uh, introduction and then now actually I will go to the principal point, uh, principal part of the talk that is how actually astronomy can contribute to sustainable development goals in Africa. And uh, 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 I will be going to the to the particular uh, examples. So uh, basically, all those SDGs, nine SDGs that I put here with the solid uh, in the solid uh, line, we can uh, see the direct contribution on both shorter but also longer um, time scales uh, contribution of astronomy to the SDGs. And then, in more indirect way and on the longer term, we can actually say that astronomy really contributes, can contribute in a significant way to basically all SDGs. So I will more focus on those that uh, that are in um, in the solid line through the examples, but then in the uh, questions part, we can discuss uh, uh, other uh, other aspects uh, as well. So the examples that I will be giving now uh, um, uh, through the through the talk uh, are coming uh, from Ethiopia, from the work that uh, we've been doing. Uh, um, uh, at the ESSTI in the last, uh, and then in collaboration with the Ethiopian Space Science Society in the last uh, uh, um, uh, five, six uh, years. Uh, uh, so then also from, uh, from East Africa, the collaborations that we have established with uh, uh, Rwanda, Uganda, Tanzania, and Kenya in particular, and then from Africa in general. So when we come to the uh, Ethiopian context, I would just like to mention that uh, the Ethiopian Space Science and Technology Institute was a established in 2016 and um, uh, it was established as a very very first uh, research center of such kind and not actually only in uh, Ethiopia but in all East African region uh, and uh, you can see here uh, the motto of the institute we explore the universe for the benefit of our people and this is really the vision that that the institute has that through the uh, through the, the space science, uh, including astronomy and then uh, space science technologies, um, space technologies, uh, we can actually, the Ethiopia can actually improve some of the principal difficulties that the country is still facing, such as improving the uh, the, uh, and making stronger the qualified sector in the country uh, through the education, through the research, improving the development of the science in general, improving the access to the water, agriculture, productivity, or uh, the access to the um, uh, natural resources, renewable energies by using space-based uh, or satellite uh, data. So these are uh, really some of the, of the aspects. Um, uh, there is uh, there are two small telescopes uh, that uh, I will mention a bit uh, later as well. Then when we come to the East Africa and the example, uh, it's a bit through the collaborations that we established uh, uh, with uh, the University of Rwanda, Barbara University of Science and Technology, two universities in Tanzania, uh, two universities in Kenya, and then the University of Zambia as well. And uh, I will also mention uh, different uh, uh, examples coming from Africa in general. No? Uh, those that, especially when we come to the, to the, some of those are the examples in which uh, I, I have the uh, the chance to directly participate to different initiatives, and then I will also mention others, uh, uh, the the bigger scale uh, projects that uh, that are also there on uh, on the continent. 
So the very first uh, 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 sustainable development goal that we can really say that astronomy is directly, directly attached to uh, is uh, uh, how through astronomy we can improve the quality education. You know? And uh, here I will really give different examples uh, from Ethiopia. So the first is how actually through astronomy we can contribute to uh, improve the higher education uh, in Ethiopia, but also East Africa uh, through the projects that we are running. So basically at the ESSTI uh, since 2014-15, uh, there is the postgraduate program uh, in, um, in astronomy, then in other uh, now four fields uh, as well, including remote sensing, space uh, uh, physics, space uh, geodesy, and uh, since recently, uh, space uh, engineering uh, uh, also. So um, you can see here just under the astronomy and astrophysics department, the number of students who already graduated, so six PhD, 12 MSc students, and then the number of um, uh, PhD and MSc students that we are currently having uh, uh, under the program. I have to say that all of the six PhD students, some of them are now our staff members, uh, the very first uh, staff members that we, we trained in astronomy, that we trained uh, in the country. And then others are uh, working uh, uh, across the country uh, uh, at different uh, universities. Uh, and we also managed in these last uh, five, six years to really uh, offer the strong uh, support uh, with lecturing, student supervision uh, in the East African uh, region. So with, uh, with this, we really um, managed to improve the level of higher education in Ethiopia and East Africa. Why? Because uh, the majority, uh, uh, basically all of our MSc and PhD students are already uh, attached to some of the public universities in Ethiopia and then in those countries that I mentioned uh, here. So basically, when they finish their studies, they will go back uh, uh, to their uh, universities and continue teaching at least for several years uh, during the commitment that they have. So basically, under the program that the country has, uh, the, the, uh, all people are coming from the university, uh, they get the scholarships from the from the Ministry of Education, but then once they finish their studies, they have to go back and uh, let's say teach at least for the for a certain number of years. So you can see here some of our uh, very first uh, MSc PhD students in astronomy. And when we come to the um, uh, extragalactic group that uh, we established in 2016, uh, so here you can see uh, the. The, some of the very first MSc PhD students doing their research in extragalactic astronomy uh, uh, from Ethiopia, Rwanda, Uganda, and uh, Tanzania. You can see uh, in this, uh, since 2016, in basically five years, the number of uh, graduated students. So we have MSc students who uh, finished uh, uh, their, uh, their research and then one PhD student, like that you can see here, and then currently seven students who are, uh, who are under the uh, under their uh, studies, two of them uh, are just, three of them are just uh, starting. I would like to say that uh, out of these eight MSc students, six of them are now doing their PhD. Of those six, five are doing their PhD abroad. We actually have uh, uh, Betty, who is now uh, at IAA, uh, doing, uh, doing her uh, PhD. And then uh, Tseleke, who will be, who got his postdoc uh, in, uh, in Chile. And then other two MSc students uh, are now uh, working at, uh, at the university. So most of the work that we are doing in research is actually focused on, um, uh, on uh, the physics of active galaxies, but also morphological pr uh, properties of galaxies and then uh, properties of galaxies in galaxy clusters uh, uh, as well. So the question that very often we are getting that not always is uh, straightforward, uh, uh, the, the, the vision uh, is how then through the fundamental research we can actually contribute to the development. No? So how by studying AGN, we can contribute to, to benefit our society and to the development in general. So here I just mentioned some of the aspects. No? So just by, by uh, training people, so through all the MSc PhD students that are there, and then the research, and then the international collaborations that have been established uh, during these uh, six years, uh, uh, only under the uh, extragalactic astronomy group, if I take it as an example, we can really see the contribution to all of these uh, 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 seven, eight uh, um, 
uh, SDGs that I marked here, at least, you know, so the one is the human capacity building that I already mentioned, because our students, as you know, do not teach or uh, learn only about astronomy, but they develop so many skills during their MSc PhD, including uh, uh, computing skills, including writing skills, uh, and so on. Uh, and then uh, contribution to the higher education that I mentioned previously, uh, but also the development of science in general, and then giving more visibility and in that way giving making stronger actually the institutions, uh, the ESSTI, and then uh, uh, contributing to the institutional development through the research, through the science, no? because more people we have, uh, better background people have, of course, that we have stronger institutions. No? Um, I mean, it's not the only uh, factor that is needed. There is much more support that is needed as well, but it's one of the funda fundamental ones, of course. And then uh, the contribution to the to the uh, uh, stronger having stronger international collaboration. So basically, all of the uh, students that are there and then projects that I didn't have time to to go into the details, but they are all done in collaboration with uh, uh, different institutions. Uh, IA actually um, uh, took a very strong participation, uh, especially the the extra galactic uh, astronomy department and then uh, AGN group. Uh, uh, so we have currently two PhD students that uh, the. Um, there is a co-joint uh, supervision uh, and then uh, uh, Betty who now joined the uh, ESSTI as well uh, and then uh, there is uh, really a strong collaboration uh, through, through several other projects uh, as well. Uh, and then also on the longer term we can uh, talk about the contribution to uh, strengthen the Entoto Observatory and then open the possibilities for future technological developments in the country as, as well. And one of the example is uh, when we come to the point of giving more visibility, uh, starting with science development and bringing for the very first time um, international community to, to the country. One of the example was, is the organization of the IU symposium that that was purely focused on the on the research uh, in, in active galaxies that was in uh, 2019. And this was just the third IU symposium to be organized in Africa in the past 100 years of the IU. And you can see here that it was the 356th uh, symposium to be organized. So basically we used this not only to attract for the very first time some of the best experts in the field, but also to do different activities for the broader community, such as uh, the outreach activities during uh, the, the symposium, the training with the students before, the training with the teachers after, uh, the tutorials that were organized there. Uh, so it was it was really a very, very positive, um, uh, a very beneficial event where through the astronomy and AGN research, we managed to, to bring all these uh, people. Um, then uh, uh, through the astronomy we can also contribute a lot on the when we come to the human capacity development not only in terms of the research in astronomy, but uh, in the broader aspect. So basically, uh, in these several last years, we organized different, uh, more than 10 uh, schools workshops and then different trainings by bringing pe people from abroad. Here you can see some of those, and many of these trainings were very general in scientific writing, in programming, including Python. So it was actually uh, open for the much broader um, uh, community. So in this way, by, by strengthening the, the capacities, I mean, the, the uh, bringing more qualified sector in the country, we definitely contribute to the SDG 8 related with all the uh, economical uh, growth. This is the example of two schools. One is the Sub-Saharan uh, uh, School of Astronomy that uh, will be uh, hopefully organized this year. And then the East African School of Astronomy that again, hopefully will be organized this year because both of them have been postponed already twice due to COVID. And this East African School of Astronomy we're planning to do on a, uh, on a um, uh, uh, be annual uh, on the regular base, so either annually or be annually. And my colleague uh, 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 Alemi Emamo, who is uh, um, who is under the, the road, the East African uh, Office of Astronomy for Development, is really the one uh, uh, who is pushing this uh, quite a lot to really become the regular uh, meeting. 
And then uh, another aspect, if we really want to have a strong education, motivate young people, and then use education for bringing more science and more opportunities, we really have to think only not about the higher education, but even to the primary secondary school level. And how we can uh, uh, reach uh, to the children is by training the teachers. So uh, training teachers uh, uh, through astronomy is extremely important and can really uh, have the strong impact. And this is something that we saw under the Network of Astronomy School Education that has been now running since, two, since 2009. I joined the NASA in 2012. And in these last few years, we organized uh, uh, 10 trainings uh, between Ethiopia, Ghana, Kenya, Uganda, Zambia. Then Rosa did, uh, my colleague from Barcelona, who is the founder of NASA, did uh, many more uh, across the continent. And here you can just see some, so basically some of the pictures. So basically what, what is the main uh, point of NASA trainings is the practical part. So using the recycled materials uh, that uh, teachers can construct different uh, experiments and explain different uh, physical astrophysical laws, especially in those schools, in those areas where there is no any access to the, to the physics uh, labs and the science labs. And then on the other side, besides uh, focusing on teachers uh, uh, trainings, again, I have to mention that the, the ESSTI astronomy department in particular, in collaboration with the Ethiopian Space Science Society, who is fully dedicated to the, to the outreach and education, uh, has been uh, so active over the past years uh, in Ethiopia and then even out of Ethiopia as well. And you can see here only some of the, the big uh, uh, events that have been organized including the, the Astro bus where my colleagues were going uh, literally with the, uh, with the bus for, for two years uh, for uh, uh, two years uh, now uh, to the uh, northern part of the country, southern part of the country uh, and to the more, more remote rural areas where uh, rarely uh, children can have a chance to really get more interaction in terms of, um, of science. No? Um, okay, and then, uh, so these are just some of the examples uh, coming from, from Ethiopia that you can get a bit of the idea uh, about all the activities that we are uh, involved with and, and how really through astronomy we can benefit, uh, uh, we can contribute to the SDG uh, for related with the quality education. But when we come to the uh, African continent as a whole, actually there are so many different initiatives, so so many countries now about uh, 20 countries uh, we have that started uh, uh, MSc PhD program in astronomy. And then also here you can see uh, the number of uh, amateur astronomical societies, which is really impressive. We have more than 70 societies that are there across the continent, which is really, and this, uh, 10 years ago, this map was very, very different. So there was a huge progress in 10 years uh, regarding astronomy on the continent. So um, I will skip this uh, slide. It was just reminding us a bit about the gender gap in science that we have. And when we come to, uh, to the use of uh, astronomy uh, for also inspiring young girls and then how through astronomy we can benefit to SDG 4 but in particular to the SDG 5 that is to reach the gender equality. Uh, one of the examples is the STEM for Girls in Ethiopia initiative that we started in 2019 uh, with my colleagues from the um, uh, Society of Ethiopian Women in Science and Technology uh, and uh, uh, the aim that uh, we have is to really focus on the secondary school girls uh, uh, by going to the uh, uh, to the schools and interacting normally in the with a smaller group of girls so most of the in uh, the pictures that you can see actually the groups are not uh, very very big so that we can establish uh, more close contact with uh, with the girls and uh, uh, we also uh, started uh, interacting with the teachers we organized the very first workshop for the teachers in order to uh, uh, discuss really the importance of promoting stem among the secondary school girls and also there was a survey that we conducted in 2019 in order to understand why more girls do not choose stem because currently in ethiopia we only have 13 percent of women of all scientists that are Women. And when we come to the fundamental sciences, including physics, uh, maths, actually this number is much, much lower. So the, the question is why, and we really managed to understand that some of the principal uh, reasons are on one side the lack of the support, but then on the other side also the lack of information and uh, role models as well, excluding the poverty and that in general we have less girls that come to the point, you know, that they can really um, 
uh, uh, start with, uh, uh, I mean, in general, uh, come to the university MSc PhD. Um, then another initiative that we also started uh, is uh, uh, the African Network of Women in Astronomy. So this was uh, uh, officially launched uh, in uh, January last year. So now we are for one uh, year running. And I have to mention that uh, during this uh, last year, AFNO became really very, very active. Uh, you can see here the, the, uh, the AFNA board uh, representing different parts of different regions in Africa. And basically, the vision that we have is uh, taking into account the strong development in Africa over the last 10 years and so many projects that are coming that I will just uh, mention some of them uh, uh, after this when we come to the infrastructure development. We really want uh, women to be uh, active participants of all of these uh, uh, developments and you can see uh, some of the numbers here uh, that basically um, uh, out of 80% that we have, we have also 20% of men who are members that we really, really appreciate because bringing more girls and women in science and changing the gender gap is a question of the society. So basically, uh, about 80% of our members are early career uh, researchers. So either MSc students, PhD students, or just recent PhD graduates, no? Uh, or MSc graduates. So this is really a sign that uh, uh, bringing AFNA as a network uh, uh, in this time is, uh, is very important so that we can really support all these young uh, women and men who are also there, as I said, 20%, uh, and that we don't lose them, that we really try to keep the, the track and that, um, uh, that we don't lose, uh, lose them uh, in their professional path uh, in terms of the science uh, development. So we'll not have time to go much uh, through the different activities that we uh, went through uh, in AFNA in the last year, but uh, uh, we can, uh, during the question sessions, we can uh, also mention that if you're interested. So, uh, beside uh, uh, all that I mentioned regarding the SDG 4, that is the quality education, and then that through that also how we contribute, for example, to the gender equality or to the economical growth, another point really where we can see the very, very strong importance of astronomy is the contribution to the innovation and infrastructure. So the, uh, the SDG 9. So this is directly on the shorter, but also, I mean, on the, on the longer term, but also shorter term. So just to remind you, uh, I will very briefly go uh, through, through some of the examples that you can see all the infrastructure development that is there regarding observational astronomy. So, and then also site testing, that is something that is really very important as well. So, uh, here you can see the two small domes that uh, we have in, uh, 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 in, in Ethiopia with uh, one meter telescopes, twin telescopes, and then Ethiopia really has uh, uh, great conditions, so many mountains, about 3,000 meters, and then uh, many. Uh, uh, it's it's the most mountain country in whole Africa, with a lot of uh, large periods uh, during the year uh, that are dry. So, uh, and then uh, um, uh, natural resource that is still a uh, dark sky. Uh, so there is uh, the site testing that started at the north of the country that uh, in the last year has uh, stopped, but uh, the country uh, really has the the uh, the um let's say the vision that uh, uh, more efforts should be put there uh, for uh, uh, studying the possible astronomical sites for the development of infrastructure in the future. So both in optical and then in radio as well. And if we come now to, to different fields, so radio astronomy, as you know, becomes uh, very, very important for the African continent. So I will just remind you about all that is going on there, such as uh, uh, starting with the SK, of course, uh, with nine African countries that are there, all of them signed a memorandum of understanding to collaborate together on the um, uh, development of radio astronomy. So this is one of really great examples how through astronomy we can promote peace because this is really the collaboration on the longer term. Then Ghana was the first country of out of nine uh, to convert the telecommunication dish uh, into the radio, uh, uh, radio um, uh, dish. Uh, the SK phase one that is now uh, starting. And then we have several countries like Nigeria, Mauritius, um, 
that uh, there is uh, uh, there are smaller dishes and then uh, the the uh, the radio astronomy as well namibia uh, is now starting with the uh, with the building of the very first millimeter wave radio telescope that it will be the first one in africa and then of course you know the long history in radio astronomy uh, in south africa including the the merging of the the two uh, institutions two organizations into serao recently hyrax is also there as the project under the uh, UKZ10 uh, for the study of the, the hydrogen and then of course Mirka that now we have running with all 64 dishes since 2018 and now we can get some of the best images in radio actually coming from uh, from Africa like this one that you all know very well uh, uh, by by now when we come to the optical also a lot of uh, uh, a lot is uh, there going on uh, um, so uh, Morocco is one of the countries that besides South Africa really made very significant uh, developments in the last uh, few years, especially focusing, uh, although uh, we are talking about smaller telescopes, but focusing especially on the um, uh, stellar activity, extrasolar planets, and then space weather as well. Um, uh, I mentioned two observatories, uh, two domes in Ethiopia, then several countries are going through the site testing with plans to put uh, uh, soon the, the, some of them smaller, other bigger, like, uh, like uh, Egypt, uh, six meter telescope. So the site testing is going on, like in Algeria, in Egypt, in, um, in Kenya as well. Uh, Burkina Faso uh, uh, is uh, uh, really struggling to, to put the small observatory. The telescope is already there, and then you are very much aware of all the developments in South Africa regarding optical astronomy, including SALT that is uh, there. And then we also uh, have um, uh, in, in Gamma Rays, uh, uh, I mean, the, the, the five Cherenkov telescopes um, uh, that are based in Namibia and that are also some of the best infrastructure that, that we have uh, currently in, in the world. So basically, all of this is really very, very important contribution through astronomy to the infrastructure development and then you know, so many things that this infrastructure development brought, you know, and South Africa is really an excellent example for that, how through the, and that is why why the, the government also recognizes astronomy in South Africa as one of the fundamental fields uh, to be supported because they realized what is the impact in terms of the social economical development for the country. You know? And basically South Africa contributed really a lot for training so many people that then from Africa that then went back later on to, to their countries after their MSc PhD. And basically that is one of the fundamental reasons why nowadays we have astronomy in Kenya, in Uganda, in Ghana, in uh, Rwanda, even in Ethiopia, because many of the colleagues that we have, have actually went through the NASP uh, aims and so on programs in South Africa for their, uh, for their training in, in astronomy. So basically through that, we can see now how in these 10 years, astronomy started developing very, very fast across the continent, you know. Um, and this is just now to summarize a bit how uh, through the previous that I mentioned, so including uh, astronomy for education, then astronomy research, and then development of astronomical infrastructure, we actually directly contribute uh, to these two uh, uh, SDGs. One is the climate action, another is the affordable and clean energy. So the climate action, because uh, due to the, if we really have uh, all this infrastructure development and then it uh, requires the protection of the large areas. Sorry? Okay, and then it requires uh, the protection of large areas and the conservation of uh, of the of the sites. Then that definitely contributes uh, to. Uh, uh, and then protection of the dark sites, it contributes uh, directly to the SDG uh, 13. Um, Astronomers for Planet Earth is another uh, really great initiative uh, that, that we could uh, uh, observe many activities that uh, they're running uh, uh, recently. And then when we come to the 
uh, SDG 7, so like in solar uh, physics that directly contributes to this SDG. We also, through the infrastructure development, in particular when we come to the SKA, uh, we know that uh, we directly can contribute on the longer term to this uh, project, so to, to this uh, SD, SDG. So we know how many um, uh, companies are there, uh, research centers, universities that are currently working on different um, uh, patents, uh, small projects regarding uh, uh, renewable energy supporting SKA and all of this will have the impact later on in many different aspects of our society. Then uh, beside all of those that I mentioned, few more points before I finish is the uh, contribution of astronomy to the to really strength international collaboration. So this I already mentioned a little bit, so I will not repeat myself. We have SK that is really a great example. But here you can see just an example from Ethiopia, no? in particular from astronomy departments. So you can see how in last five years we managed to establish uh, the collaboration with uh, all of those institutions uh, from different continents and um and this is definitely the contribution for, for the country because a lot of uh, human capacity development came through this uh, beside the research, beside the science uh, development uh, as well. And uh, uh, just one thing that I would like to mention is uh, different meetings that have been uh, there. So I will not have time to go into the details, but I would like to mention the meeting that we organized here. You can see the very first meeting on African-European collaborations that was in 2008 when we started organizing, this was in collaboration with my colleagues from the OID, with Vanessa and Kevin, that we started, as I said, in 2018. So the idea was to really bring uh, stronger the collaborations between uh, Africa and Europe uh, by, uh, by proposing the special session under the annual meeting of the European Astronomical Society. So this, uh, uh, due to the really uh, uh, impact, uh, important impact that the meeting had, we started organizing it on the biannual uh, uh, base. So the second one was in 2020, and this year we will be having the first, the third one, uh, uh, the third special session. Um, uh, uh, I will be sending soon uh, the, the uh, note about that and for asking for the, the abstract submission. Uh, so this will happen in Valencia in uh, in this uh, this year. And then few more points uh, is the that I mentioned uh, 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 already a little bit is the contribution of astronomy for promoting peace and then bringing stronger institutions. No, in this aspect, uh, well, uh, the same as other other uh, uh, sciences. Uh, so astronomy can also contribute to make stronger uh, institutions, and we know that having stronger institutions in the countries are fundamental uh, for uh, uh, also uh, improving the chance for having more uh, political stability. It's not enough, it's not the only factor, but it's very important factor. Uh, and then uh, in that uh, aspect, working on what is the uh, policy framework is very important as well, because why it's important? Because you want the political engagement uh, on the longer term. So in that aspect, in Ethiopia, a few examples from Ethiopia again, in Ethiopia in the last few years, a lot of work has been done to come up with the very first Ethiopian space policy and strategy, um, uh, both green and white paper. And then currently we are working on the roadmap, uh, how to develop astronomy and space science uh, in the next uh, 30 years. And this is another initiative that I would like to mention that uh, has been started by five of our colleagues in nuclear physics, and it became really continental initiative. You are all welcome to, to join. So basically the idea under the African strategy for fundamental and applied physics is really to, in the next two, three years, to come up with the strategy, including all fields of physics, so astrophysics and cosmology is there. Uh, we now, uh, there are five of us who are running, uh, who are running the, the working group. And the idea is really to include the whole community so that we can really bring the, the, the strategy, to have the strategy in our hands. What are the current, what is the current status in physics in general uh, on the continent? What are the current needs and where do we want to go uh, in the future? You know? So where African continent wants to go in the future regarding physics development and how through the physics, including, as I said, this, uh, astrophysics cosmology that we have there, how we can actually contribute to the development so that with this strategy, we can then help decision makers, help governments, help ministries, African Union to really use it as something uh, to plan in future um, uh, their strategies and infrastructure development, science development and so on. 
and few other initiatives that I will not have time to go through, unfortunately, because I can see that uh, uh, it's already 45 minutes. So I will just summarize uh, here that basically with all previous that, uh, that uh, I mentioned, in the long term, we can really contribute to these two SDGs that I believe are the, uh, the fundamental ones, but in the same time, the most challenging ones, you no? Know, because they are big, big uh, uh, goals. You no, know? one is to reduce inequalities, and then another is to uh, eliminate poverty. You no, know? so basically, if we really, uh, through astronomy and science, manage. To, to bring uh, to make Africa stronger, more independent, uh, so that we have people uh, in the countries that African continent is not depending only on on exploitation uh, uh, of the natural resources. Where basically nowadays we have uh, agriculture uh, and uh, uh, mining that is there, and then a lot of exploitation of the human resources. So that picture has to change, and and uh, the young people in Africa are those who are changing that, and. Uh, we can just push a bit and help you know that that through the science as much as each of us can can bring uh, uh, help with all this motivation that is there and as i said by making africa stronger through the education science and technology that i put here definitely we are reducing inequalities the huge inequalities that we are having in the world uh, and then in the same time uh, ending uh, the the reducing the poverty and contributing to to the uh, to the sdg1 to end the, the poverty. So I will stop here. There are a few initiatives you can get in touch with me. I mean, uh, uh, that, that you are very welcome to, to join. And thank you very much for uh, your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, Miliana. <clears throat> very nice talk. I, I enjoy a lot. And uh, now we open the, quest the, the, the talk for questions. Uh, please, for the participants, raise your hand and then uh, I will give you the microphone uh, asking Miriana. Questions, Miriana. Talk. Jose Gaite Cuesta asks you, is observational astronomy not too expensive for Africa? Yes, well, that's a question that we are always getting uh, in all aspects. No, is launching, uh, you know, web space. Uh, I mean, uh, the the James Webb uh, telescope is also not too expensive. No, uh, in general, no. So, uh, well, I do believe that uh, you know, if we. Uh, 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 don't change uh, the aspect, you know. Uh, so what what really means expensive? Is it on the low, uh, short term, on the long term, you no? Know? And to to what we uh, really uh, uh, want to give the um, the the priorities, you no? Know? So. Um, uh, I would say, I mean, my straight answer is uh, I don't believe that observational astronomy is uh, too expensive for Africa. Something that definitely I believe can be done in a better way is uh, joining the efforts, minimizing the costs and improving the collaborations so that, you know, the costs can be minimized, but the the uh, the contribution uh, of the observational astronomy to development of the science in different countries can be maximized. You know? So basically, uh, strengthening more the uh, infrastructure development uh, 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 in Africa uh, by bringing more countries together. So maybe not all countries need to have the optical observatory, but putting the efforts together is something that uh, I personally uh, believe that is very much uh, important. But uh, uh, um, if we come to the point of uh, investing in, uh, in science, if we really believe in this uh, uh, vision that through science we can benefit the countries and the development and that without science we cannot speak basically about social economical development, then can we really ask the question if the, you know, in, investing in the science is, is expensive? So my answer is no. But that's a simple answer, no? Then we have to, if we come to the more details, uh, then of course, uh, uh, there is a lot to extend the discussion, no? Why yes, why not, how yes, not, and so on. Okay, thank you. If if you allow me just to comment this, with the one of the, your slides, you, you talk about luxury, astronomy is luxury, and it's not. Uh, they ask me a lot why you want to know 
what is the rock in that asteroid made of? And I say, meanwhile, I make the research, I move a lot of economy, a lot of process, a lot of work, education. So it's not a question of expensive or not. Uh, it's, it's, it's a lot of things. It's not the final object, it's meanwhile. Uh, Henrik, please go on. Me, I guess. <laughs> yes, uh, okay. thank you. Oh. Uh, no, Enrique, first Enrique, of all, Enrique, yeah. uh, first of all, uh, congratulations for your impressive work. It's it's uh, it's a it's a very stimulating to hear, and uh, it's very encouraging that you can use science and astronomy in in this kind of way. And uh, so it actually reminds me of uh, of the physicist Niels Bohr, uh, who believed in international collaboration as a, as an instrument for peace, and also seeing it as an instrument for fighting poverty and all the other sustainability goals, that, that's, it's simply impressive. So congratulations. Um, I'd like to, uh, there's one question I have regarding uh, one of the things you said, which was about uh, interest in science uh, and especially uh, the question about uh, girls' interest in science and the, the low participation of girls. I wonder if you're familiar with the studies, the, the international survey, which is called ROSE, uh, the studies of, of, of trying to find out why people, for instance, are interested in science. I mean, there's one thing about a lot of the technological questions, but there's another thing about uh, more aesthetic questions, about wonder questions, some of the questions that you said that we all share and we sure do about where we come from, what are the stars and all that. So I, I was just wondering if you're familiar with some of that work and, uh, and uh, if not, then um, uh, th th that might be a, a good way also to, a good thing to look into to see uh, some of the things that, that get even more people on onto science, uh, at least to see some of the, the wonderful things that science can do. And that was all, thank you very much. Thank you. So I'm not aware of the, the project that you mentioned of the work. So yeah, it would be good to, if we can get in touch later on after the, the talk, uh, that would be great. Absolutely, that would yes. be, be fine, thank you. If you have a web page, please put in the chat, Henrik. Yeah, that would be good, yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, Enrique Perez Montero. Go on. Okay. Thank you. Hola, Mediana. Uh, thank you very much for this work. This is really amazing and impressive what you are doing there in, in Africa. Uh, I have a, a couple of questions. In fact, the first of all, I, I know this is tough, but I'm interested in how uh, these things can be applied in astronomical education to engage disabled people in, in astronomy. Is there any specific action or plan to do so there? Yes, hi Enrique, really nice to see you here, yes. Uh, well, uh, actually I didn't, uh, that's a, yeah, I didn't mention that, uh, that point, uh, at least in, uh, in Ethiopia, uh, there, uh, there is a lot of work that has been done uh, also with uh, disabled people, in particular with, uh, uh, with people with uh, visual um, uh, disabilities, and um, we have still uh, some of the moon models, uh, the, um, the constellation models that you uh, you gave us, and then from uh, uh, Amaya also that uh, that we got uh, uh, the Venus uh, uh, that we are, and Moon that we are regularly uh, using in the outreach activities. So um, so when we when we go for outreach activities. Very often we put the part that is related, uh, um, uh, you know, the activities related with the disabled uh, people. Uh, there is uh, in uh, Addis in particular, we have the association uh, of uh, uh, people with uh, visual uh, disabilities at the university also, there is a particular uh, faculty and, um, and there are plans that we establish more, more collaborations. Uh, uh, there were few activities that were in particular uh, dedicated only for the for the people with visual disabilities. I don't know if Alemia is around. If if Alemia would like to mention maybe a few more points, no. But um, but I mean, it is true that it's. Um, 
I mean, uh, um, there are, there are, the needs are so, so big and there are so much to be done on basically all aspects of the society. And I have to say that the number of us who are there is still quite small in comparison with the needs, no? And that's actually when we come to the Ethiopian, and that's a bit across the, the African continent, except maybe in South Africa where you now have more people, no? But I mean, I know that across the African continent, many of the colleagues are, are struggling, no? Uh, because there is so much to do, no? Uh, you have to lecture at the university, supervise students, uh, do research in the same time, a lot of, you know, uh, logistics and running departments and so on. And then plus all the, the activities related at uh, human capacity building in general with schools and so many, no? So, I mean, many other things, no? So, so when we then come to the more specific needs, no? Like the ones that you mentioned, we can see that the needs are really there and very often we just don't have strengths, no? So so in that aspect, any kind of collaboration and uh, and support would be very much, uh, I mean, from from outside would be very much uh, welcome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's that's great. And and I have a second question related. I I'm, I would like to know your personal vision about the Starlink project. You, you know that on one hand, uh, this is going to help uh, people to get more connected in um, in, in, in countries underdeveloped. But on the other hand, so we, we astronomers are, uh, uh, are we are about to worry about how this can uh, influence our capacity to see the sky. What do you think about that? Yes, well, I share your uh, your double uh, worry. No, I mean you are, you are worried in terms of astronomy, and then also I'm aware of the importance. I mean, living in Ethiopia, uh, uh, I know how much uh, really. Um, uh, the internet connection and bringing more connectivity to the people is important. I mean, it's extremely important. You know, we could see that uh, now in in this uh, last uh, two years. You no, know? so uh, so how to bring these two things together? It's really something uh, uh, that uh, a lot of efforts have to be placed from different uh, uh, communities in the coming uh, coming years. I think that uh, when we come to the African context, um, there is more and more aware of that as well. I mean, uh, um, I think more people are are trying to get, uh, uh, you know, involved in one way or another uh, in terms of preserving dark skies, at least among the uh, astronomical community, and then uh, speaking more about the preservation of dark skies, uh, uh, the importance of dark skies for astronomy development, and then uh, all the part of the uh, constellation with the satellites uh, is there as well, no? Uh, um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm not directly involved just because I don't have time. So, um, but yeah, I share your, your worries. Uh, and I know, as I said, that there are more initiatives coming from Africa as well in that, uh, at that aspect, you know, to, to really see how the dark skies can be, can be protected. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Enrique. Thank you, Enrique. Uh, Javier Busons, please go. Hi, Mediana. Hello, Javier. Hi. Um, my question has two levels. Um, in general, what would you say are the, the most cost-effective exchange programs or uh, mechanisms to contribute between a, a European university, a small university, in, in, for example, mine in Southeast uh, Spain, and Africa, and more in particular, I joined a collaboration called eCalisto. I don't know if you, Calisto, if you know about it. It's uh, like three years ago, and uh, it has a great potential in terms of both the humanitarian contributions, the outreach, and also all the way up to top level science. So that can be used, say, to train teachers for in. Um, uh, primary, secondary education, but also to train post grads and post grad students all the way up to to PhD. So um, the, the the founder of this collaboration is is getting retired now, and I would like to reactivate that activity because uh, uh, a number of radio stations in the, uh, in Africa are part of this program. And so, what would you recommend as the, the most cost efficient way to, to, to make the contributions via um, exchange programs, visits, uh, long stays, um, I don't know. Uh, you, you have first first hand knowledge of the needs, so that's why I'm asking you. 
Yes, well, I mean, um, the most cost effective, uh, uh, I mean, focusing on the second part, effective, uh, is really related with what are the uh, current uh, largest, biggest needs, you know. And in that aspect, I think uh, currently, I mean, for most of African countries, taking into account that uh, many African countries are just starting with uh, astronomy development. Uh, one of the uh, largest uh, uh, needs that are uh, there is really with uh, the help with human capacity development. So either through the lecturing, uh, through the supervision of MSC PhD, I mean, through the lecturing uh, at the MSC PhD level in those countries that are start, that are uh, that started with a program and very often they are lacking uh, the, the professors. Uh, in particular field, and then with uh, support with the MSc PhD students, um, and then through the research as well, by, by making stronger the collaborations between uh, uh, the young researchers and also not so young uh, in Africa, and then uh, then Spain in particular, and, and Europe, no? So, in, I mean, this would this really is effective on the longer term, because, uh, because of what I said, no? Uh, the, the majority of the students that are there are already attached to the university, Cities, uh, or will be after that uh, staying uh, uh, in their countries, continuing with, uh, you know, training others. And uh, so that is really, in my perspective, uh, one of the biggest contributions, no? And then strengthening the research, because uh, by strengthening the, the research and supporting uh, the, by strengthening the international collaborations, it's really something that will contribute to the excellent science on the longer term uh, in Africa, in Europe, but globally as well. So, uh, 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 there, in that aspect, I think much more can be done uh, because uh, uh, we do have a lot of, in Europe, uh, there are uh, many opportunities in terms of getting funding from the European uh, Commission. And very often uh, people don't think about involving the, because very often there are no collaborations with African colleagues. So people come up to in Europe to write a proposal and they, they connect with people from other continents, but not necessarily from Africa. So in that aspect, I think uh, a lot can be done to improve that. So even maybe the connection, the collaborations are not already established, but they can be established for the future. And I think uh, having this uh, argument that I believe is, uh, is quite strong, you know, that when we speak about, when we think about science development globally, uh, contribution of the science globally, and then the excellence of science, it's really a question of everybody. You no, know? we have huge capacities, huge talents uh, across Africa, and we cannot uh, permit to lose them. So, so by, uh, yeah, as I said, I mean, just to finalize, because of time, I think uh, cost effective, uh, focusing currently the most on uh, human capacity development and uh, uh, contribution to the uh, uh, research science and strengthening the international collaborations. And then, you know, through that also all the support that is there going on with uh, infrastructure development uh, will definitely come uh, come as well. Congratulations on your commitment and I will get in touch with you privately. Yes, please. Thank you, Javier. Thank you, Javier. Now there is one more question by Daudi. Hello. Daudi, how are you? Okay. Okay, I'm fine. First of all, congratulations for a nice presentation. Now, since you have been in Africa for a couple of years, and maybe you are you have experience about the diversity of culture, tradition uh, in Africa, do you think maybe uh, the diversity of this culture, tradition, art of Africa maybe is one of the barrier to why astronomy uh, science in general is slowly developing. Well, no, personally, I don't think it's a barrier. Personally, I think it's a huge advantage, you know. Uh, I mean, the diversity that Africa has is something the most beautiful that we have on the continent, no? At least personally, that's what I love the most and that I'm so much passionate, uh, passionate about, you know. So I think it's, it's actually the advantage. Uh, if we come, I mean, if we just focus on the heritage that the African continent has in terms of the culture astronomy, uh, ethno-archaeoastronomy, I mean, it's, it's amazing. There is so much research to be done in that aspect um, that uh, uh, that it's it's just one of the the points, no. And uh, I don't believe that uh, uh, there is a strong diversity 
um, uh, actually blocked the development uh, in, in, in science in Africa. Actually, it depends in which fields of science we are talking about. I mean, there are uh, many fields, there are different fields of science that are actually quite uh, developed, uh, I mean, quite uh, developed in Africa, like agriculture, you know, that uh, has been there for, for a long year, and we have many experts, uh, colleagues in agriculture that are some of the, 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 the great experts in the field, you know, or if you come to the, um, you know, to different fields of the biology research in the biology as well, or medicine as well, I mean, a lot of the tropical medicine uh, has been done in Africa, and it's really one of the leaders, you know, so it it really depends which fields of, we cannot generalize no that that uh, uh, science is not developed in in africa uh, here i focused on astronomy and that's where i would like to 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 remain you know because other fields uh, i don't know how the status is but um, uh, i think uh, we can use the the diversity that is there really uh, to benefit the the development not to to stop it i don't think it's a barrier mm -hmm. okay thank you very much Thank you, Daudi. Thank you, Daudi. <clears throat> Any other question to Miliana? Okay, thank you. Uh, seeing none, I think it's time to uh, close the seminar. Uh, okay, Daudi, another question? Okay. So my question was about, because she spoke about the SKA, and from her presentation, she said that for the African countries, there are about nine countries which have been engaged, if I'm not mistaken. Hello? Uh, yes, Daudi. Uh, so nine countries will be directly involved uh, in the SKA for now, where uh, the dishes will be... Uh, Thousands of dishes will be located in the in the coming uh, coming years. Okay, now maybe for, uh, for, for for other countries, for instance, maybe in particular, how do they get involved in the SKA? Maybe I'm not aware of how they get involved. Um, well, I'm not the person to to answer this question but uh, i mean um, i think i can put you in touch with some of the colleagues including uh, james that you know very well uh, okay. and uh, and i don't know if is if there is anybody here uh, uh, from the sk who would like to comment on that but i'm not the best uh, uh, i know that each african country that is involved there is a membership that is uh, quite significant that the countries have to contribute to it. Um, and then how exactly uh, the countries got involved, I really don't know. So, okay, okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, I, I think there is a question from Isa. Yeah. Isabel, go hello, on. Hello, Miriana. Hello. It's a great to see you, even if it's in 2D version. <laughs> great, great talk. Congratulations. Uh, you, you already know that, uh, that I'm completely overwhelmed, um, I mean, both professionally and personally of the kind of work you do. So that, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying anything new here, but I'd like to congratulate you again. I have one question. That I don't know if you already addressed that during the talk because I've been interrupted several times, but, but uh, my question is related to the possibility, if you have already considered that, to, um, to make some kind of exchange program with the Spanish universities, for instance, since uh, in, in the doctoral programs, and given the situation, there are still many courses uh, online. Uh, so so what makes things uh, much easier for, for interacting with people in anywhere in, on earth, but in Africa especially, if you have considered the possibility of establishing connections with Spanish universities to incorporate somewhat uh, students uh, at a pre-doctoral level or even uh, doctoral level to those programs. Yes, that's that's a great point, uh, Isa. So um, uh, there is awareness about that. So uh, under SEA, uh, uh, last year we started uh, uh, the the small committee that is uh, um, uh, basically astronomy for for development. Uh, committee and um, 
uh, we uh, one of the the activities that we have uh, and that we discussed already several times it's to really explore more uh, these possibilities no so uh, we re already uh, started a bit more with uh, the university of uh, la laguna uh, isabel uh, is uh, is there and with um, uh, uh, with uh, the University of La Laguna, uh, we submitted even one small proposal uh, this year, but unfortunately it was not uh, selected. Uh, it was between Ethiopia and, uh, so ESSTI and then uh, the University of La Laguna. So we are aware of all of these like conventions that the universities uh, have there. But I have to say that we are just starting with exploring really all the possibilities and to see how. So basically under this small committee SEA for the development, um, uh, that there are few of us there, uh, uh, including uh, Ruben from the IAA uh, and then myself. Uh, there are a few people from uh, from uh, Canary Islands and then from few other institutions across uh, across the the main uh, the, the peninsula. Uh, so uh, it is there. Uh, it's there uh, at least um, uh, as a, as a plan for now. No. So we hope. Hopefully this year we will be able to to start more actively with the work, and then uh, then to see. Uh, I mean, uh, if um, if there is any particular convention that is there that you can that you know about. Uh, I mean, you can please, uh, I mean, just uh, forward that and we can also, I mean, uh, talk more about it. Uh, maybe if Inma is there, that's for the University of Granada, we can also maybe get more more information. Yeah, I was referring just to the universities because I, I think that should be, I mean, should, uh, the, 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 this uh, should reach much more people, uh, but, but also at higher levels. There is the possibility that you are already ex exploiting uh, with the Severo Toa at the IAA, but there are also also, also another Severo Toa and Maria de Maestro centers for astronomy in Spain. So maybe that could be a good idea to try to contact them and to see whether they have online activities that would be useful for students. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Isa. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Isabel. And congratulations again. Thank you. So uh, I think it's, uh, we can close uh, the seminar. I will stop recording now so we can stay here for a few moments. Thank you, Miriana. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Miriana. Bye-bye.